Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Tanaj Nikki and today is a big day. I'm gonna be showing you guys around my studio. So this is where I do all my makeup and fashion content and also some of the other creative stuff that I'm into. So if you're into content like this, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you're subscribing, make sure you click the notification bell so you know about everything I have coming out here on YouTube. So let's get into it. So I figured I'd start with kind of just showing you guys around the different things and we'll we'll walk through and I'll explain as much as I can as to what's on the walls and what I have going. So the first thing to notice is that this is a loft that I'm in and you see how tall my ceilings are and loft means there's like no real doors. So when I'm filming, gratefully everyone is deadly silent. Not my dog though. He's not always silent, but yeah, I, I don't have a door. And I will say that's probably the only thing that I don't care for. And maybe the fact that there's not a, a physical closet here, but I make it work and you guys will see that in just a moment. These are the palettes that I have on display here. Now, of course, this is not all of them. These are just the ones I chose to put up here, mostly because I feel like the acrylic shells can handle the weight. Um, I did get these acrylic shells from two places, Amazon and also Five Below. Actually, the bigger, heftier ones that are at the bottom are Five Below, but I did get these from Amazon. And I think they're just listed as like picture frame things. Anything I purchase that I can put in the link in the description box below, I will so you guys can, you know, if you like something, you can get it too. Since I'm a little short one, the ones that I reach for the least are up top and then the ones I reach for the most, of course, are right at the bottom so I can just reach over. I tried to kind of categorize them like that Stuvia's place over there. At the very top is Violet Boss and then um, Sugar Rush. That's a palette that came from Tarte's like sideline that they have. And it's a very beginner friendly palette, but I just, I'm not drawn to it. So that's why it's all the way up there. Some of these were gifted. Some of these were from palette reviews and things like that. So all of them kind of have a purpose, which is why they're still here. But I felt like this was a really nice way to display my palette that um, didn't take up too much space, but I would still be able to visibly see them because I'm very much, if it's out of sight, out of mind. So I'm not going to remember where things are if, or if I even have them, if I don't get to see them in some way. So having them just literally in a pyramid on the wall helps me a lot. So when I am filming, the videos where I'm sitting down, this is what I'm looking at. I do have a mantra that I move back and forth that usually goes right here, so I can kind of see myself. This is a Canon 77D, and I do have a mic that goes on top of this when I'm filming the videos where I'm sitting down. I can show you guys a couple clips, insert it here. So while I'm filming this, this is what I'm looking at. This is a table attachment, and I got this from Amazon. I will link it below, but it is just connected to the table that way. So over here, this is what I call kind of like an everyday drawer if I had drawers. This is just stuff that I'm reaching for at the moment. A lot of the stuff I get from Ipsy end up over here just because they're small and petite and I can kind of grab them. For example, I will say the thing that shocks me the most that I use all the time is this big bad palette from Megan Thee Stallion and Revlon collaboration. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know how this ended up being one of my favorites, but I legit use this all the time. I do have a video review of this and I'm just, I'm shocked that I actually really love this. So I used to have a giant table and a lot of things on top of it. And it would just be jars and jars of things that I was using and reaching for at the moment. And because my skin changes so often, I always had seven different foundations and like three different concealers and all those other stuff. So I bought this makeup organizer, again, off of Amazon. I'll link it below. You guys can see these are just like the brushes of the moment. And it's kind of like a makeup kit, but in a tower. Again, it was really affordable. I think maybe $13. Yeah, this is so convenient because I have it kind of categorized and I can just reach for stuff and it's there. So this is my makeup table. And honestly, I know it looks kind of messy, but trust me, it is as organized as it can be <laughs> given the circumstance. This table actually is a table that I order off of Amazon. It actually has wood grain. I bought reflective tape to go over this. So when I'm sitting down and I'm filming here for these makeup videos, the light reflects down. And so it works as a way to bounce off light. It's, it's a good lighting trick that I learned a couple years ago when I was researching on how to set up a beauty room. So I will say lighting is everything, right? 
right now I do have an LED light directly in front of me over here. I'll kind of show it to you guys with, hopefully without blinding you. All this in conjunction kind of creates the lighting that I have throughout the room. Here, as remember I explained to you about the reflective light, you can see here I don't have any shadows and that's because of the reflection down here. And you see, I can move all of these and with them being mobile, it allows me to kind of recreate a different setting anytime I'm setting things up within the room and trying to get, you know, like the best lighting so I'm not having to manipulate the camera equipment so much. this is probably the angle that you guys recognize the most from my channel if you are a frequent viewer and if you're not subscribe subscribe i'm pretty cool okay so this is kind of like the fashion corner i have here two really cool racks that were thrifted and i'm telling you i can't explain the excitement <laughs> for these two racks because they kind of just changed everything i completely actually redesigned my room and how i thought it should look based off of these two cool pieces. This right here is a U-Rack and it just kind of like makes things look very chic without me having to try. I put a little hat right here just cause you know, I didn't have anything kind of cool to stick out. Maybe one day I'll craft something that looks good to go over this. But right now I just have a little beret there to make it look nice. Right now I have some frequent shoes that I have been styling with all the different hauls that I have. Um, these are my pretty neutral shoes. And this is a like side table from Five Below. And honestly, I didn't know what I was doing with it. I bought it in the hopes that I'd figure out what to do with it. And before, I don't even remember what I was using it for, honestly. But it kind of just happened to house shoes and it's kind of working right now. This T-Rack that I have, right now I'm putting just very long pieces or bottoms are hanging up here. Obviously the long pieces, it fits well because because you know it drapes all the way down and I have it clicked all the way up to the tallest setting. It just looks nice having this the way it is. And I don't know, it was a winner for me. And I was just really happy I was able to get these two things. Like I said, I just kind of centered everything around it. Uh, right now, these are some shoes that are beautiful, but they actually don't fit me. Well, they do fit, but they're uncomfortable. And I always preach that I don't wear uncomfortable shoes, but these are just too beautiful to go away. So that's why they're up there. And I just got these two geometric shelves. I got them from, I think, TJ Maxx for about $12 a piece. Just thought it was a deadly pleasing thing to display something and why not shoes? We're gonna talk about artwork. All the artwork that's in this room is something that I created. These are, I call them my girls and they are just abstract paintings that I did. It's, I think it's the same face, they do look pretty different. But I just decided to do something different and I just felt that they look really artistic and work well with the room. This piece is from a show that I planned on doing before the panorama hit <laughs> and it's just as part of a series that I'm doing called accessories. I will do it one day and you guys will come along for it when I decide to finish it. But yeah, it's just uh, these heels that are actually a bed of flowers and I, I really love this piece. I felt like again, it spoke to who I was as a fashionista and that's why it's hanging up here. Okay guys, so this side of the beauty room is pretty material heavy, is where I keep the rest of my supplies, all the supplies I have for when I'm doing makeup for clients, including my different brushes, the things that I use when I'm doing like creative work with face paint, all of that is here. <laughs> We're gonna go through it piece by piece, and I just wanted to show you guys kind of like the overview of this is what this side of the room looks like. So you guys saw this grouping of paintings and uh, these don't really have a name for me. Um, they're just kind of like graphic pieces that I did full of color and they just felt like they belonged in a room. So they're here. Um, I got a lot of these cool things came from either TJ Maxx, Five Below. I live in Five Below by the way. So yeah, TJ Maxx, Five Below, Dollar Tree. I, I go and use everything from everywhere. So like I said, if I can find equivalents of it or actual links to it, I will put that in the description box below. So that is my little comment board that I have here. 
by Below, I believe. Uh, this is a picture of Astrid and myself. I think that was our very first photo shoot that we did together. So that lives here. So this is one of the organized drawers that I have. I do have it categorized. Um, I can do a makeup tour for you guys in another video if you would like, especially if it involves the stuff that I pack for clients. That's why I have so many base products like concealers and foundation and stuff. So this is different uh, foundation that I've used on clients and yeah, so kind of all that lives here. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. So yeah, these are blushes and highlights. Uh, down here it's contour and bronzers. You know, like I said, palettes and liners, all that stuff's here. So if you guys wanna see more of it, let me know. Uh, this I got from Five Below and I believe this humidifier I got from Amazon. Um, I'm using fairy lights down here to kind of illuminate this because this little thing got really dark really fast and I don't really know why. <laughs> that is like a, a lighted frame from God knows when and where, but it kind of fits, so I did that. That is my latest Norbina palette that is on display here. And this is my Athena face painting palette or body painting palette. I'll insert some pictures here of the work that I've done using this palette. And yeah, it's a pretty good one. You do need to set your face quite a bit though, cause it'll move, but it's a good one. I'll link it down below. These are all the many, many brushes. These are containers that I got from Dollar Tree and I categorized them a bit. Oh, these are mostly concealer brushes. These are foundation brushes. This is like detailed line work ones, packing brushes. And you can see back here, those are powder brushes. So these are all the brushes. Um, I'm gonna get up here in a second cause that's kind of complicated and we'll get there. I told you guys, I do quite a bit of nail work and uh, this is just some of my nail polish. And these containers came from the Dollar Tree. I kind of contain them by color family. Sometimes I do use these under like a gel base, but uh, I don't use these as often as I used to, but um, I don't have the mind to throw them out yet. So. so down here is where I keep all of kind of like the makeup research books that I've had and also some magazines. Now I've kept the magazines mostly for posing ideas so I could learn how to pose because I did not. These are actually subscriptions I had that I kind of got for free for whatever I ordered. It came with a free subscription. So that's how I got them in the first place. But they were really helpful in studying the models and figuring out how to how to pose. And so these are some of the makeup books that I bought off of eBay. Yeah, almost all these came from eBay. This is a makeup beauty Bible, 10 minute makeup. And you can see like there are so many helpful ways of recreating looks that you can get out of here. Ugh, it's just so good. Obviously the incomparable Bobbi Brown makeup manual. This is a this is a must if, if you're ever interested and learning where to start. You see there's highlights in this. <laughs> if you're ever interested in learning where to start, getting this is a great start. Sephora has a book too, and that's what I'm flipping through here. And this also has some great tips in it. When I'm telling you I read all these cover to cover, I really did. When I got certified, I really wanted to know. That's just what the certification gave me. And yeah, it's really helpful. One of the ones I was most excited to get was Comedy's book. Uh, if you guys ever watch What Not To Wear, Carmody was the makeup artist who gave all these fantastic makeovers. And yeah, I was super excited to get her book. Again, I read it cover to cover, so another great read. I will say the one that I learned the most from was Fine Beauty. And this is by Sam Fine. He's a very famous black makeup artist. Uh, he's worked with all the greats, Mary J. Blige and Patti LaBelle and Naomi Campbell, as you can see here, and Tyra Banks. It taught me all differences between people of fair skin tones and deep skin tones and how we approach contouring and highlighting a little bit differently and what actually complements the difference of deep skin tones versus fair. And again, it just kind of picked up where my certification left off. So I highly, highly recommend this book if you can get it. It's a bit of an autobiography as well as a, a makeup tip book. So yeah, you can see Vanessa Williams, just gorgeous. I, there's just so many cool things in here that it just wasn't in my course. And I'm very happy that I got this book and learned it. 
So for everyone who is really into learning the equipment that I use, these are just some of the different lenses that I use. Now, the ones I primarily use are on the cameras now, but these are some of the other ones. So this is a little mini Sony camera. It's really good for vlogging. It's the CyberShot and it doesn't have that much for autofocus. So I personally don't like to use it for vlogging because it can get a little shaky because your hand naturally shakes. I actually prefer using the gimbal that I'm filming this on right now, but yeah, it's a cute little thing to have. I think I may have paid like $300 for it. I will link it down below if anyone's interested in picking this up. So this is the Rode microphone. Um, you can see it looks like a little mini boom mic and that's exactly what it is. It attaches to the top of your camera because um, most Canons have a slit where they will sit, where, where that device will sit on it. Um, it's about a 60 to 70 dollar mic again i'll link it in the description box below if you're interested but it's very good for the money um i've kind of upgraded since using it but again it it, it does the job and it's a pretty good mic i work mostly canon and sigma lenses uh, this is a pie lens of so 50 millimeters and it just shoots very wide lenses if you're just trying to get a wide shot that can blur out the back a little bit this is a really nice one to have it's actually fairly cheap compared to the other lenses I'm gonna show you, <laughs> but yeah. And I, oh, also I have fairy lights in here cause this was such a dark corner with all of the lenses. So that's why there's fairy lights. This is the kit lens that came with the Canon. It's the 18 to 55 millimeter and it's fine. I mean, again, I, I have other ones I prefer but it is not a bad one to have. So this is a Tamron lens that I actually got, I think from a thrift store or a pawn shop. Um, this is a Sigma cap that I put on there just so I can store it safely. I will say it does give really nice vintage looking camera shots and very like 90s like Sienna filter, but like from the camera itself. So yeah, this is a very old lens, at least 30 years old. It does, like I said, catch really nice vintage looking shots without having to put like any filter or edits on. So this is for a long shot. If you're doing something with the distance, it's a 75 to 300 millimeter Canon. I don't use this very often cause I don't need it, but I picked it up when I was learning how to use my cameras. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's helpful to have it, but you don't need it. So I, I hardly ever use it, but it is nice to have such a long range lens. So this is a Sigma 1835. This is a beautiful piece of equipment. I will say if you only get one Sigma lens, this should be the one that you get. Um, it is rather expensive though, quite an investment. I'm not using this one right now because I've kind of gotten used to the other two that I have set up on my primary stations, but this is a good lens if, like I said, you're learning and you wanna invest. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you all kind of the rest of the room. This is another day because you see I'm wearing something different, but I wanted to show you guys this armoire that I got. So, well, it's hard to explain. It's, it's actually like a, a stand up mirror. That's also a jewelry box and it has storage. I got it from Amazon. Again, I will link it in the description below, but let me show you. Hi guys, again, there is another mirror inside of here. So these are actually ring holders. I have the rings stored in here and one day they will be filled because I love a good ring. And like I said, there is another mirror in here. So when you're putting on your jewelry, you can do that. These are some necklaces. Most of these I made. I told you guys I'm really artsy fartsy. So almost everything that you can think that someone likes to do as far as crafts go, I do them. These are random earrings that I have here. A lot of this was meant for me to fill up with pieces that I made. Some of these are ones that I just didn't hang up. I felt like they could go in these pouches. Um, some more earrings. This is another piece from Go Be Flawless. And these are watches in here. Right here, I do have these earrings. They could probably be hung up at the other thing. Uh, this is where I kind of keep all like the fashion stuff. So these are some cups, some no-show covers, clips, fashion tape, and these, oh my God. These are the best things ever. They're just nipple covers and they just move everything out. And these are just some more earrings that are kind of under construction. I keep them in here so I can fix them one day. That's an extra uh, extension cord. So yes, this piece is wonderful. Well, I think I only paid $100 for it. So yeah, I will, again, we'll link it in the description box below. It is fantastic. So to turn this around, this is a great storage piece. I have kind of just like random storage pieces back here. So makeup sponges. Q-tips, tape. A lot of this is what I pack in my bag when I'm going to do clients. Yeah, makeup brush cleanser, Vaseline, disinfecting wipes, 
hairspray, hand sanitizer. And this is where I keep my makeup travel book bag. It has so many cool compartments in it. I found this at a thrift shop. I'm sure there are equivalents on Amazon that I could link down below, but yeah, this is my traveling book bag. This thing is just so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. So this is a five-tier bookshelf that I got from Target. Highly recommend it, so well made. Yeah, it's just a bookshelf, so you can kind of get them from anywhere, Walmart, Target, any big box store, even the smaller ones, you can find something similar to it. And I just got this in white. All these items that I have in here are still ones that I use, just may, maybe not as frequent. At the very top, these are my hats. I have a lot of hats. I love hats, it's a great accessory. Um, I used to kind of have them on the walls. I haven't figured out how I want to keep them that way, but yeah, right now this is where my hats live. Uh, these are the Norvina ABH palettes, one through three. And these are some Hip Dot SpongeBob palettes. If you didn't know, now you know I absolutely love SpongeBob. And my friend Marissa, that's Enchanted Rose Beauty. Here on YouTube, I will link her in the card right here and in the description box below. She's awesome and she gifted me those. And to continue promoting how nice Marissa is, but she was decluttering these palettes, these uh, six pan palettes by Juvia's Place. I came to visit her in St. Louis and she basically gave me all of these. I'm telling, I have a lot of stuff that she gave me <laughs> that I still use. And I do actually wear these quite a bit. So they did go to a good place. Now, these are all of my bullet lipsticks and I have a confession to make. I know a good bit of these are probably expired. And to be honest with you, I, I just can't bring myself to let them go. Bullet lipsticks are just, that's my kryptonite as far as letting them go. But I still wear some of them quite infrequently, but I wear them. That, that's my excuse for now. I wear them. Uh, these are sponges. Well, these are just some like heart lights, but these are just beauty sponges. Some that I've gotten off of Amazon, some that just I bought randomly. And I have them kind of categorized by color back here along with some extra brushes because I got a lot of brushes. So most of these containers and things that are holding things up, these came from the dollar store. Like this is a portrait holder or painting holder. Same with these. This came from, I believe, TJ Maxx. These are just like glass cylinders that came from Dollar Tree. So again, I use a lot of different items like that to organize. To continue that down here, this is a leaves basket that came from Five Below. I got it in white because I knew it was like the same kind of white of this and it just kind of looks seamless together. This kind of holds some overhaul lashes. All these are the Ioni lashes that I got from Dollar Tree. But you guys, most of the lashes that you see on me are these. These wispy ones by Kiss are great. But yeah, a lot. if it's a dramatic lash, it's more than likely one of these Ioni lashes that I have. I keep a lot of this stuff for my clients and also for myself. And also this is the mirror that I take when I'm going to see clients so they can agree or disagree with what I'm doing. So these are some pull-out organizers. I did get this from the dollar store. It's a Blabus Prima 3000 flat iron slash curler. These are the ones that I straighten my hair with. And this just has other stuff in here that's hair related. Bristle brush and a comb and some hair ties, scarves. Yeah, this is hair stuff. And underneath here are kind of, I think, yeah, these are palettes that I don't use that are going to be decluttered, but right now they don't have a home. So that's what's under there. So this is just like a kind of organizing thing that I have going on right now. It's just kind of a bag of miscellaneous things. This is the remote to my LED lights. This item is a white balance card. I have it kind of rolled up in here. So again, I have a lot of photography equipment and camera equipment that, you know, so I can get the best quality out of anything that I'm filming or if we're out and about doing something and this is it. So this basket again is also from Five Below and this is kind of just like a catch-all it has a lot of storage things in it um, a lot of these are the like the ipsy bags that i get this is a towel i use when i'm using my like flat irons and extra cords and labelers and so this is just kind of like a miscellaneous bag that when i know i need to get something it's likely in here if it's not something i use all the time down here kind of more miscellaneous things kind of bulky and you know, things that I never really reach for unless I'm going to um, something very specific. So you recognize this is kind of the thing that goes in your car for when it's too hot outside. This thing is a great reflector of light and it works really good in photo shoots. And like if you have a table like the one that I have, but doesn't have that reflective thing on it, 
this right here works as a good substitute. I think I got this one from the Dollar Tree, so $1.25, where you can get the more expensive ones that are like seven or $8. But yeah, this is a cheap alternative way for having like that reflective light come back at you for any photography needs. This is an extra light that I have that go for my umbrella light. This is an ottoman that came from Five Below that has a lot of random things. Again, I don't have a closet. So I had to find boxes for boxes, if you know what I mean. This is actually the bag that goes in my bag when I'm going to uh, meet clients. And this is my camera bag. This is just a Canon bag that, you know, is designed to hold my camera equipment and travel safely. Well, I have this iron and also a steamer, and this is like a little mini ironing board. I honestly don't iron that often, but what I do is often in this studio. <laughs> and so this is where that goes and it stays and it's safe. So this is the final wall in my room and here you can see I, I know you guys are like what is this what is all these chains this is a pulley system so that these papers can come down so I can have a solid backdrop so I wanted to show you guys how the pulley system works that's up here it is one of my favorite features of this studio I'm going to be using the blue pulley to pull down the blue backdrop there you have it. Now I have a blue background for whatever I want to do. This is what I might use this ring light for, or for photography specifically. It's really, really nice to have something like a solid background like this. It allows for editing and specific softwares to go much smoother versus a wall that may have a lot of shadows going on with it from different things. I really enjoy this particular system. It does have a third one. I just don't have a third backdrop up. So that's something to add later. And I will link this in the description box below. So if you guys are interested in it, you can get it too. And now I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to just roll it back up with the pulley. There you go, and it stays up that way. So it is out of my way and I can do whatever I want on this wall. Last but not least, I want to show you guys some of the tripods that I use. This is the one I use for the phone. Um, it's just like a little piece that has a quick release on it. You see? And that's how the phone stays up. It's the similar way to uh, the camera, like a, a DSLR. This is how I use the phone. This one is a very tall one. I don't know how tall it actually is, but it's a really nice tripod and I have an identical one that I use to hold up my DSLR camera. This Canon is my DSLR. This is the EOS Rebel SL3. This is a Sigma lens. The Sigma lens 17 50 millimeters. I love this. This is a really, really good camera setup. I love this rig. It's the same tripod that's used over there. I love that it's adjustable, that I can do whatever I want to with it. I did buy this from a retail store, but if I can find a similar one, I'll link it down below. Here, I'm showing you guys, I'm about to sit down for a sit down video I'm filming. And this is the rig when it's set up with the monitor on the table and also the microphone that's attached to it. That Rode mic I'll link down below is about a $300 mic and I have an HDMI port that links to it so that you can see what this is playing. I have a stand that I use to hold this monitor so I can see what I'm doing when I'm using the tripod. <laughs> was the room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm pretty proud of it. There's a lot of pieces here and there that of course I want like to improve on, but I think I have a pretty good setup going. So if you did enjoy this, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below which was your favorite part. Subscribe to the channel. If you're subscribing, make sure you click the notification bell so you have everything I have coming out here on YouTube. And share. Sharing with a friend really helps my channel grow. Follow me on social media. I'm at Tanaj Nikki. That is on Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.